Hi friends, welcome. My name is Christina and today we will talk about copper peptides. What are they and are they worth the hype? It feels like there's always some sort of new magical ingredient that is not really new, but the way that it's being marketed at us, it makes us feel like this is a new magical ingredient that will somehow turn back the clock on our aging skin or make our pores completely disappear. And I feel like copper peptides is the new kid in school. And it's not a new ingredient, but the way it's being marketed at us, it feels like it's this new magical thing. Like it's been touted as the Botox in a bottle or nature's Botox. So I thought I would do the research for you guys because with all these new ingredients, it can get overwhelming and a little exhausting. Like we all have lives. We can't constantly be looking into the new cool ingredient that we need to see if it would work for us. So I thought with copper peptides, I take the brunt of the work on and do the research, see what it is, what it does, what can you use it with, and I have actually used a serum with copper peptides and I will tell you the results that I've noticed so far. To class up this video a little bit, not that this is sponsored at all, but I got some non-alcoholic red wine and I wanted to try it. So I thought I'd have a glass while we chat about copper peptides. I'm not a big drinker in general. I do drink alcohol once in a while, but I'm not a huge drinker. I find that being 39 and just in my late 30s in general, my body does not tolerate alcohol the same way anymore. Let me know if you guys have the same issue. Like for me, if I have a glass of wine at night, good luck sleeping. Like it's going to be the worst sleep ever. If I have two or three glasses, well, forget it. I'm just gonna be nursing a hangover for like two days. So the recovery time is just not what it used to be when I was in my 20s. So I thought I'd try non-alcoholic wine, which I get. The fun is kind of taken out of it, but I do enjoy the taste of wine. So I wanted to see, does it actually taste like red wine? And it smells like red wine. So this one is a Pinot Noir alcohol free, and it is from some place in Germany. So got my glass here. Let's see. Well, it looks like Pinot Noir. I mean, I feel like I'll be drinking grape juice right now, pretty much, because there's no alcohol, but it looks like a Pinot Noir kind of color. Smells like red wine. It's grape juice. This is not red wine. Well, we've solved that conundrum and mystery. Yeah, this, this tastes more like a less sweet, sour grape juice. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Definitely not a substitute for wine by any means. So there's that. I will drink it though, but it's just, it's grape juice, guys. A sour, less sweet grape juice. Cheers. Three, two, one. So copper peptides have been called the Botox in a bottle or nature's Botox. And I'm here to crush your dreams and put an end to that thought process because it's just not true. You cannot get the same result from topical copper peptides as you would get from an injectable like Botox. So let's just put that nonsense to bed from the beginning so we don't get anyone's hopes up. A high level explanation of what copper peptides are, super high level, is copper peptides are peptides that easily bind with copper enzymes to form the copper peptides. Peptides are a short chain of amino acids that are the building blocks of certain proteins that our skin needs, which are naturally occurring in our bodies. Just topping myself up here while we chat. It's starting to taste pretty good, guys. Just not bad. So one thing I found out during my deep dive into this copper peptide business is that not all peptides are the same. So there's different peptides that have different functions and do the different things. So for example, there's peptides that signal your body to create more collagen. There's these other peptides, the neurotransmitter inhibitor peptides, I think if I'm saying that correctly, that actually relax your muscles so they don't contract, similar to what you'd get from injectables like Botox, but you don't get the same effect. So no, it's not Botox in the bottle, like I said not the same effect, but 
kind of along the same lines. And then there's peptides that moisturize your skin, just to give you a few examples. So when you hear the word peptides, it might not necessarily mean what you think it means. So I just wanted to put that out there because I learned that and I thought that was pretty interesting. Copper peptides have the ability to penetrate the skin and potentially help with collagen and elastin production. This in turn can help reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, make the skin appear firmer, and even make the skin appear smoother. Now, the reason I say potentially help with collagen production is because there's not enough scientific research out there to definitively prove this. And even a lot of dermatologists out there don't fully support the claims that in fact copper peptides do help with collagen production. So it's just a lot more research needs to be done on this to have definitive proof. Now, there are some studies out there that do support these claims, but a lot of these studies have actually been paid by the companies that make products with copper peptides in them to support their claims. So take what you hear about the claims of a product with a grain of salt, because marketing, she's a tricky lady. Before we get into my experience with copper peptides and what my results have been, I want to touch on one more thing, and that is what you can pair copper peptides with and what you should avoid pairing them with. So when it comes to pairing your copper peptides, it's a good idea to pair them with any sort of hydrating ingredient like a hyaluronic acid or a glycerin because copper peptides can be a bit drying. So these humectants really help draw moisture into the skin. That's why if you look at, for example, the Biosance copper peptide serum or the Ordinary, uh, copper peptide serum, they both have glycerin and hyaluronic acid somewhere in the ingredients to help bring that hydration to the skin. When it comes to ingredients that you should avoid pairing copper peptides with, let's talk about AHAs first, so uh, alpha hydroxy acids, something like a glycolic acid, for example. Avoid pairing your copper peptides with AHAs because copper peptides have some exfoliating properties. You don't want to mix it with another exfoliator because then you over exfoliate your skin and this can lead to dry or irritated skin. We don't want that. Next is retinol, although I do have different thoughts about retinol. When it comes to pairing retinol, especially if you're sensitive, or new to retinol, I would say avoid mixing copper peptides and retinol because again, this can really dry out your skin by mixing them. So maybe avoid that altogether or do a little patch test. And the last ingredient that I avoid pairing with copper peptides is vitamin C. And that's because copper peptides may oxidize vitamin C and that reduces all its gorgeous benefits. So to avoid that completely, I use my vitamin C as part of my morning routine and my copper peptides for my evening routine. So I've been using the Biosan Squalene and Copper Peptides Rapid Plumping Serum for the last couple of months. This serum is a hydrating serum that hydrates and plumps the skin because of its hyaluronic acid, glycerin, squalene, and copper peptides ingredients. And it retails for 92 Canadian dollars at Sephora, which I know it is pricey. It comes with a dropper, which works pretty well, and it has this pretty baby blue color, which will not stain your skin, so don't worry. It does have a slight, and I mean tiny bit of a metallic smell, and it goes on really smoothly. It is a little tacky for the first few minutes, but that goes away, and it does not pill. Okay, so let's talk about how this Biosan serum feels. When I first tried this, I was at Sephora, and I put it on the back of my hand, and I couldn't believe how smooth and how soft it made my skin feel. I was walking around the store just rubbing the back of my hand debating whether I wanted to spend 92 Canadian dollars on a hydrating serum. I ended up spending $90 on a hydrating serum. Clearly, when I try it on my face, I am so impressed with how it feels. It plumps my skin. It provides such a good deep level of hydration and moisture and it makes my skin look plump and smooth and it makes it feel so soft. So I have to say this is probably the best hydrating serum that I have tried so far. Do I think that I would use this over the Aveeno Triple Oat Serum or Bioma? No, because those I think are more affordable, fantastic hydrating serums. This one is just a notch above though. Do I think that it helped with my collagen production? I don't know, I have no way of testing that, but I do know how it made my skin look and feel, and I loved how it made it look and feel. I do pair this with my retinol, like I mentioned earlier. I do pay, pair my copper peptides with retinol. I did do a patch test first to make sure that I don't have a reaction from it, but what I do is I put on my retinol first, then I wait about 
five to 10 minutes to let it soak in. Then I apply this on top and then I go on with a moisturizer on top of that. And this is my nighttime skincare routine. And I only use it as my nighttime skincare routine. Would I spend this money again on this hydrating serum? No, because it's just too expensive, too much money to pay for a hydrating serum for me. So I'll stick with my more affordable serums. But if this goes on sale, I am loading up because it is incredible. It feels just so great and it makes my skin look and feel amazing. So final thoughts. Do I think copper peptides are this new thing that we need to all be incorporating in our skincare routine? Not really. I just don't think the research is there to support the claims that come with copper peptides yet. Um, I don't know if the collagen producing benefits are really there for copper peptides especially when comparing with something like a retinol, which is the most studied anti-aging ingredient out there and has real evidence that shows that it supports collagen production in the skin. So I definitely wouldn't trade your retinol for copper peptides. I also think there's so many products out there with so many ingredients that we're constantly bombarded with that we think we need to incorporate in our skincare routine. And I think copper peptides are something that I don't really need to incorporate in my skincare routine at this point in time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments if you've used any other copper peptide serums and what your results have been. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know if there's any other videos you'd like me to make or products you'd like me to review. I love hearing from you. Thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you next time.